Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a Malibu 640 LERB GT Charmin. You're going to fill your fresh water up at the back of the vehicle, you put your fresh water filler point. So using the Cathargo key, you'll be able to unopen this cap. Carry your hose pipe or some hose pipe fittings. Flat end of the hose into the vehicle, connecting the other end of the hose to the tap and fill until it either overflows or until you're happy that you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel. Just down here before we go any further, just below your orange marker light, just before the wheel, this is your waste water outlet point. So all your dirty water that's been collected from the sink, shower, hand basin or anything that you've drained off via a plug hole comes out in the middle of the van when you open this handle. Drive over the grid on the way out of your site and deposit your dirty water. Make sure this is left open in the winter to avoid that water from freezing in the tank below. Pull back your fresh water, so we've talked about how to fill it. Now how to empty it, you open this door and you lift your mattress up. We've got this section here, and this is the top of the tank. So to open it, you just turn this valve all the way. So you can turn it three quarters of the way and what that'll do is it'll drain off everything but leave 20 litres or you can turn it all the way at the front and it will drain off all the water underneath the van. Make sure this is drained off in the winter to avoid the water from freezing on board. And if you've taken on a source of contaminated water, ensure that you've drained it off and again if you're leaving the van for any length of time make sure that the water's drained off but more so in the winter to avoid what's known as frost damage <laughs> large storage area this is your lpg locker so you can fit two standard six kilogram gas bottles in here i've got my test bottle on at the moment to show you your appliances working so to connect it up you've got the hose on the cylinder and it's a hand tightened pigtail this one so what you need to do is left to tighten right to loosen so it's the opposite way with it being gas turn it on and off from the top of the cylinder making sure that it is always off before you do start traveling and ensure that the bottle's strapped in top and bottom so it's nice and safe and secure when on the road you do have space at the back for another bottle so you can always carry a spare I'm sure you shut this door first and then that one and on the back bumper you do have your rear parking distance sensors this is your vent for your heating system so when operating on gas this allows fumes out like an exhaust so this gives the location of the boiler on board so it's underneath the bed to hook the vehicle up if you are charging it or if you're on a site Get your hooker blade, lift the collar, slide it onto the van first, always hooking the motorhome up first, then the sight, so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand. This locker is your cassette locker. So what you need to do is ensure the toilet is in the position to get the cassette out which i'll talk about more inside the vehicle because the toilet is a hideaway toilet and then you can lift and slide the cassette out but what i need to do is i need to spin the toilet first because it's not in the right position and show you the right correct so to remove the cassette from the vehicle lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out You'll then be able to carry it, or you can pull the handle up, and you can wheel it to your disposal point, which is normally beside the toilet block. And then empty, it's a case of removing the grey cap here, pressing the orange button when pouring the content of the cassette out, pour it out, once you have tipped it out, put some water in, because there's normally a tap beside the toilet disposal point, give it a rinse, tip out again, before going in with a cap full of chemical, which is either green or blue, 
and it's about 120 mil. Once you've done that, you can put it back into the vehicle and you push in and it's good to be used. You fill the van with diesel. You've got your diesel filler there, which opens with the main Faith Decat OK as it's a lockable cap. And underneath, you've got AdBlue. So AdBlue cleans the exhaust system out um, of soot and carbon deposits. And it's 19 litres of the liquid, which is an additive, which you can buy on the pump now, or you can buy in a drum. And it'll come on between the temperature and fuel gauge, look like an exhaust light, an orange light. And it just means that you need to fill your AdBlue up. And on that 19 litres, it'll do five and a half thousand miles. But it normally comes on with a thousand miles to go. Tire pressure, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI all round. Underneath your passenger seat is the location of your electric block unit. So this is all your 12 volt fuses, because they all run to this unit. So carry some spare blade fuses with you, and you can replenish the fuse should you have a problem. Underneath the floor is where you'll find the location of your engine battery. So this panel just lifts off and you can take the battery out, replace the battery or jump start off the top of the battery. But you do have a designated jump starting point underneath the bonnet, which I'm going to show you now. And that is your bonnet release. Underneath your bonnet, you do have all your fluids, so you've got your screw mush. Lift this cover off and you've got your power steering fluid and your, and your coolant. Brake fluid, oil filler and dipstick down there for, for checking the levels. And then a jump start, earthen point here. And then between the air filter housing, put your key in here, lift this up. You've got a positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. So to operate your 12 volt control panel, you've got your on off button here, which is known as your master switch at the bottom there. And that will turn on 12 volt or 240 volt, depending on what you have available to you. So if you've got 240 volt, you'll have this light on here, which is mains voltage. So you'll be able to plug things into a three pin plug and you'll get power. Whereas if this wasn't, illuminated you'd only have 12 volt off your leisure battery you've got the little music icon there which just turns on the radio off the leisure battery so if you're parked up and you want the radio on in the morning you can do you've got leisure battery reading take the hook about to get a true reading of the leisure battery Fresh water reading, you can see there you've got 25% of fresh water on board. Waste isn't lighting up because we've just let the water out so it's not registering any water so that's empty. And then you do have your vehicle battery reading. So to operate your digital Truma CP control panel. To turn the system on and off, you press and hold to turn it off, press it once to turn it on and it'll come on. And then to get into the menu, you just press it once. You'll notice you've got a thermometer with it in a van flashing at the top corner. If you press enter, this is how hot you want your vehicle. So you've got all the way off in the summer when you don't want the heating, or you've got all the way to 30 degrees in the winter when it's very cold. So once you're happy, so if we say 27 degrees there, that's how hot I want the inside of the motorhome to be. I'd press enter and that'll save that at 27 degrees. Now you've got a thermometer in some water. This is how hot you want your water. So if you don't have any water on board, you'd have it on off. 40 degrees for showering. 60 degrees for doing your dishes. But it's entirely up to yourself how hot you want your water. Or you've got boost, which will turn off your heating and prioritize your water first. But for this, we'll just say 60 degrees because we want the heating to run along with the water. Next, you've got what source you're heating the water and the vehicle off. So you've got gas. So make sure your gas bottle's on and it's turned on. You've got mix one, which is 750 watts of electric and gas. 
you've got mix two, which is 1850 watts of electric plus gas. So you'd use mix two in the winter if you're away and it was really cold, use a mix two, will boost the vehicle up the temperature because you're using both sources together. Then you can turn it over to electric. So you've got electric 750 watts EL1 and you've got EL2, which is 1850 watts of electric. Don't waste your gas if you're on a site, unless you're away and it's really cold and you're using mix two for the first 10, 15 minutes, then allow electric to continue to heat the motorhome and maintain the temperature. Because if you're on a site, you've paid your site fees after all, you'll not want to waste your gas. Then you've got your fan in the top right hand corner, so eco or high or boost. This is just a 12 volt assisted fan. So eco will use less 12 volt. High obviously uses more fan speed, so it's going to use a little bit more 12 volt. And boost uses full power on the fan, which is going to use the most out of the 12 volt battery. Sleep with it on eco because it's a lot quieter than sleeping with it on anything else. If you're going to sleep with the heating on in the winter you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off just the once though clock in the middle and then spanner you can go all the way down to reset and to reset the control panel if you ever get a warning triangle in the middle reset preset click again and it will restart your control panel and then to turn off Press and hold and it'll say off and it'll completely turn itself off. So in the kitchen, on the hob, you've got two gas burners. So you've got a built-in piezo igniter there. So light it up. You will have to bleed it through if you have turned the gas off and then left it for any length of time. But you can see they're both working. 180 mil pan on there and 150 mil pan on there being the maximum size pan that you use on those burners which it tells you here once you've had them on if you do allow them to cool just before you do put the glass lid down otherwise there is a chance that you could shatter the glass cutlery tray but you've also got your gas tap isolation valve for the fridge and the hob so if you do need to isolate them you just need to turn them like so that's open that's closed but these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced if there's any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe this is mainly for when the vehicle is serviced like i've said chopping board which is your sink cover which also can slot into here so if you put it in at an angle you have it there you can use it as a stand for your washing up like wooden things when you're doing the dishes. And then this is just showing that your water pump's working and your water there is getting up the temperature as we've got the hot water system on. So your hot water system is working as it should. 240 volt socket when hooked up. You've got all your light switches, your step and another 240 volt socket on here. So step in and out, that'll go in when the engine has started. Lights are all on there. So that's where your switches are. And then with the cupboards, as long as you push the catch down, you'll be able to open the locker. And that's throughout on the overhead cabinets. Now to operate your Dometic fridge, so your on-off button is here, so you can turn it on and off. So a light up blue when it's on, and you can manually select each source that you want. So you've got mains 240 volt gas, which you'd use if you're wild camping. Obviously, you'd, you'd use mains if you were on a site or you were at home and you were pre-chilling the fridge before your trip away. And then when you travel, you can use the battery setting, which isn't a leisure battery. It's a feed of the engine battery when the vehicle's running and it acts like a giant cool box. So it'll only maintain the temperature. It won't keep the te make it any cooler or any warmer. It'll just maintain that temperature it was at. But what you can do is you can press A, which stands for automatic energy selection. And you'll see it'll, it'll jump over to, to mains electric. And what that does is it picks the best source available to the motorhome. So if you're hooked up, it'll always prioritise mains. 
if I was to unhook it and I had gas on board, which I do, it would go over the gas. And if I started the engine, it would go over the 12 volt setting from the Fiat alternator. When you turn the engine off and you're going wild camping and you're relying on it switching back over to gas, it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas. This is a safety feature in case you have forgotten to turn your gas bottle off. The last thing you want to do is for your gas bottle for it to be sparking on gas in a petrol forecourt where there's naked flames. That's why it waits 20 minutes, it'll fail. It's not a fault with the, with the vehicle or the fridge. It is a common safety feature on the Dometic fridge. So all you need to do is self-ignite it on gas and you hear a click and it'll ignite for the first 20 minutes. Temperature, so five when pre-chilling, turn it down to three or four when you put the shop in, just so it doesn't freeze. And you have got a travel catch, so this black knob, push it down, that's it locked. Press the green button, push it in, and that'll allow the door to open. When you're not using it, turn it off, push this down, and it'll stop the door from shutting on itself, and it'll allow air to circulate in and out of the fridge. Because the last thing you want to do is not leave the door open, you'll get a nasty smell in your van as the air is trapped inside the fridge. So now in your washroom, make sure your shower screens are tied back before you travel so they're nice and safe and secure before you do start traveling and they don't cause any damage. And then your toilet, so your toilet has A, B and C, so three positions. So using the, this knob here, the handle, you can push it right the way at the back and you can have a shower and not get the toilet wet. You can put it in a position B, which you just want to make sure the back of the toilet is straight on with the side of the van to get the cassette out, which is how you'd empty the toilet. And then you can bring it right the way out if you want to use it, but it's entirely up to yourself. To operate the toilet, make sh making sure that you do have some fresh water on board because the flush does come through the fresh tank. Press the button. Push your toilet a little bit and then before you use it you want to open the blade which is this grey lever here. Slide that to the right. You can now use the toilet. After you've used the toilet, give a good flush and shut the blade to the left. Leaving the blade open means the cassette won't come out the side of the van when it needs to be emptied because the mechanism is engaged and it's holding the cassette into place. If you've bought the green or the blue, it goes into the cassette, like I said, from outside. But if you've bought the blue and the pink, the pink goes in a header tank, which this motorhome hasn't got. So what you can do is dilute some pink with some water in an empty spray bottle. Spray the bowl, it'll clean the bowl, and it's an order neutralizer for the toilet, so it'll give a nice smell. Flush it and put it in the cassette, and it does the same thing. And when the cassette is full, it'll indicate with three green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette to the left hand side of the flush. You also do have your shower, obviously your shower, your hand basin and your toilet roll cabinet. You can put your toilet roll on here and feed the toilet roll through there and it means it doesn't get wet when you're showering. And when you winterize, always drain off the fresh, drain off the waste, leave all the taps open, unscrew this shower head from the hose and lie this hose in the shower tray just to stop any water from freezing in here. With your sh shower tray and surround, please don't use any harsh chemicals like a bleach or anything on the plastic. Use soapy water to avoid staining and damaging the white shine on your shower. At the back, of the van underneath the bed so I folded the beds up and I've took the support bar that goes here and there's one behind us so make sure they're in when you do put the bed down to bear the weight but you do have your main trip tester and your RCD unit so if anything's tripped try here before you try the main site and if you want receiving power but you're hooked up best way to tell if it's a vehicle or if it's a site trip the vehicle if the vehicle trips you've got power if it doesn't trip you haven't received power this locker here is very important. So this is where your boiler lives. So your boiler does two jobs. 
supplies air blown heating around the vehicle and also heats water so it heats 10 litres of water at any one time and this is your water cylinder to drain this off in the winter to avoid it freezing what you've got to do is there's a black box just here turn the diamond and the button will pop out at the bottom and that will drain off the 10 litres directly out underneath the chassis so to close the valve it is a bit fiddly with it being in here but I'm going to show you to close it so you need to turn it it is tight so I've got a hold of it shut it like so and press the button in the button will automatically pop out if it detects three degrees or more obviously when you're using the vehicle just leave the heating and the hot water on and this space will stay warm so it'll never drop the water on a night unless you have it turned off when you come to reuse it turn the diamond push the button in if the button doesn't stay in heat the area first so on the control panel forget about turning your water on just put your space heater on select the temperature for the first 10 minutes and put it on gas or electric depending on what source you have available to you it'll heat this area and then you'll be able to push the button and it should stay in but make sure this is open in the winter to avoid the water from freezing in here because unfortunately frost damage isn't covered by the warranty company it's your responsibility to protect your vehicle against frost you can, you'll also need to lift this little handle up as well and that just drains the hot water lines so it stops any water sitting in any pipes open the fresh, the waste and all your taps within the van and that will stop any water from freezing and causing any damage inside your vehicle